Good morning, everybody. My name is Shoshana Gross. I'm the major events manager with the Ohio Restaurant Association, and this is our daily dose. I am back today with Laura Morrison. Um, Laura, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks so much for having me today, Shoshana. Um, in addition to being the managed, managing director of our membership team, employee and food um, safety, Laura is also our resident historian. Um, she has a lot of wonderful um, knowledge about the history of the ORA based on her tenure with us, which is over 20 years. Um, and then also just because she happens to know a lot about the association world. Um, so we are starting a series um, in which we're going to talk a little bit about the um, history of associations, why the ORA is so great for membership, uh, for, for our members, and um, kind of what we have to offer, how we operate. So um, let's get started with just a little bit about the history of the ORA and what an association is. Sure. So just to give you a background, associations are organizations founded and funded by businesses that typically operate in a specific industry. So our industry, restaurants. Um, and many associations are nonprofit organization. ORA is categorized as a nonprofit and is considered a trade association, meaning it's an association of people. Um, in our case, it's companies that have come together to promote, partner, and protect the common interests of Ohio's restaurant industry. So ORA was founded in 1920, a very long time ago. None of us were here then, right? <laughs> and oh, I, I think <laughs> maybe you were. <laughs> I was not here. Thanks, Shoshana. Really nice. <laughs> no, you uh, great I was def it. definitely not here. Um, and for 100 years plus, the purpose of the ORA continues to be um, and to improve the conditions within the Ohio restaurant industry uh, by advocating or really influencing, you know, uh, government and about the importance of restaurants, uh, its operators and employees. And in our case, we represent any organization with a license to operate in food service. So the ORA is a private organization. It's not a public uh, government agency or organization. And as such, the ORA is a nonprofit and it's funded by our own members. Those who join the associations as new members, those we um, have that have been longtime members, we have many, many of those. And you know, it's also funded by certain events that we hold, products, services that we provide. And, you know, the ORA actually functions with a staff and a board of directors. So like many organizations, the ORA board of directors and staff come together to form an executive body to conduct the association's activities, uh, to promote the industry, and to partner with certain organizations to protect the industry and our members. So our board of directors and leadership are phenomenal entrepreneurs, educators, and successful restaurant business people who we, as their team members, get to work with every day. And they expect a lot out of the work that we do. Great. Um, so that's a lot of information about associations and also about how the ORA operates. Um, so thank you very much for telling us a little bit about that. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Yeah, so uh, the work that we do on behalf of the restaurant is industry, so ORA's members are our first priority always, and we continue to focus the recovery of Ohio's restaurant and food service businesses through the co throughout the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, we keep our eye on the goal, which is to provide members with the latest information to help them make critical decisions and improve business results. So, the ORA is the only trade association fully dedicated to promoting, protecting, and partnering with the restaurant and food service industry. What other kinds of partnerships do we have uh, that you could tell us about? So yeah, uh, well Shoshana, let's face it. There are a lot of rules and regulations that anyone in the food service industry is required to adhere to. The ORA board has taken the approach that the more we can help operators through resources 
including partnerships, the more the successful the restaurant or the industry will be. Some of the ways the ORA team meets the ORA board's strategic approach is to partner with similar organizations as ours, such as the National Restaurant Association. So we have a uh, unified partnered agreement with them. Um, and that also includes the other 49 state restaurant associations across the country. And we come to the table together with the goal to partner with regulatory agencies as well. Um, regulatory agencies include governmental agencies across the state and local spectrum. We work with elected officials so that the voice of the Ohio restaurant industry is heard and taken into considerations when decisions are made. So consultants we partner with include our vendor members. These organizations help restaurants with cost savings, information, services, and many times uh, serve also as an advocate for members who participate with them in the ORA's program. Um, are there any particular resources that you think we should share with our members today? Sure, um, absolutely. One of the most recent uh, resources we published is the Unified Industry Voice Campaign. You might have heard of it. Um, ORA <laughs> held uh, an excellent webinar and we posted that plus the campaign on our website. The campaign is designed to provide clarification and help operators with necessary decisions uh, regarding COVID-19. And it's an example of a great partnership between the Ohio Restaurant Association, the Ohio Environmental Health Association, which are Ohio sanitary and community. So they're the, the people that go in and, and uh, inspect restaurants. And um, Franklin County Public Health, who partnered with us on this document. So when we can partner together with entities like these in order to create easy to use, you know, sets of guidelines, flow charts, um, to help restaurant operator, operators keep their facilities, employees and guests safe and open, our members are able to operate seamlessly um, <clears throat> under these challenging guide, you know, conditions. And ORI's website, um, I just wanted to talk about that for a second. It's considered our home for all of the efforts done on behalf of the Ohio restaurant industry. So we put it out there as a one-stop place to find resources and tools. So that document, the guidelines um, and flowcharts can be found there. And you know, Shoshana, I think that maybe ne the next time we have a conversation, let's just make walking through the website the focus of, our, of that conversation. That sounds great. Yeah, there's so much to offer on that website. And I think um, sometimes people don't even really realize how much is there. So let's take some time to go through the website and um, show everybody what we have online for them to access. Yeah, that'll be great. Very good. You know, well, mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining me today. Is there anything else that you wanted to add before we leave? So thanks for having me, of course, um, and the RA will continue to provide members with critical up-to-date information and direction on relief efforts, as well as all the other membership benefits. And, you know, we look forward to continuing to assist members in any way possible. Um, if you're interested in learning more about becoming part of this large community of restaurant and food service professionals through the Ohio Restaurant Association and National Restaurant Association, you know, we're all fighting uh, on, for our industry's uh, industry and on your behalf. Uh, please reach out to me. We can, you can find my info on the about page at ohiorestaurant.org. And I just want to let you know that we are all stronger together. So let's do that. Great. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, everybody. And um, we will see you again soon for another Daily Dose. Thanks, Shoshana.